Jesus is good all the time, you know. He makes a way that there seems to be no way. Can you lower this just a speck? Thank you. I don't want to frighten anyone, especially if I sneeze or something. <laughs> Would you turn to Matthew chapter 5, please? Oh, Jesus, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you tonight as you feed us from your throne room. Holy Spirit, we ask that you'll digest your word that we may have correct interpretation in Jesus' name. Matthew 5. Hallelujah. Now, if your neighbor doesn't know where they're going, help them. It's too late to be shy. Matthew 5.43. Glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Matthew 5, verse 43, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy and bless those who curse you and do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be what? Perfect. Perfect. You shall be what? Perfect. Just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, we have this assumption that we can't be perfect, but we are perfect in Christ. We can't be perfect in our own strength. It's impossible. But the Word says that we are complete in Him. That means you're perfect in Him. Amen? He says you shall be perfect. It's a level that you and I want to reach. There are multiple levels that God brings us to. There are actually three levels. The third level is called the master's level. And you and I want to reach a master's level. And what is that master's level? It says of being, becoming perfect. In other words, the word for this is a level that we're reaching so that we can, when something is perfect, everyone has always heard the words or, or the saying bullseye. Perfect is, an, is a, the arena of direct target. Perfect. When something hits, it's perfect. So there's, a, there's an area of a broad area, but then there's a perfect area. It is a designated target that we want to reach so that we're no longer just seeing broad. We're connecting. And one of the things that we want to connect is from the present, from the past, from the future to the present, and connecting the events of the past to the present. When we connect all those, we can associate with a target, because we're using events and everything else that's around us, from coming from the future to the present, and the things that have been from the past to the present. We're utilizing those things to be a specific target. Does everyone understand? So the area of perfect means direct target. We might call it bullseye. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2. In 
So when somebody's throwing darts and they hit a bullseye, we go, yeah, man, it was a perfect throw. Bullseye. First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. Let's speak it together. <clears throat> But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit. So you need to get into spirit to get the things from God. That's why it's vitally important to become a worshiper. Because it's through worship that you make connection. Look at you can read the word and memorize the word, and that's wonderful. But the word without the anointing is no good. Does everybody get it? You got to become a worshiper. You got to make contact. Every time it's time to worship, you should make contact. If there's not a contact made, then there's not a revelation coming. Contact releases. You may not know what's coming, but it's being released. Amen? But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. You got to make contact to get this stuff. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with the Spirit. With spiritual. Verse 14. For the natural man, the carnal man, the old man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually what? Discerned. In other words, they are spiritually, the word discernment here means judged. Judged. But he who spiritually does what? He who spiritual does what? Does everybody see? He just gave you the definition. He who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. So just to, to be able to discern means you are able to, dis, to judge. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Again, spiritual, to spiritually discern is to judge. Discernment is the ability to discern or to judge. Now, there's a place we want to reach, which is third level discernment. Third level discernment. It's the master's level. It's called perfect discernment. Perfect discernment is the ability to pinpoint or target an area to be judged. Again, there's surrounding area, there's broad area, or there's a direct and narrow area, but there is a perfect area, which is we call bullseye. So when you're dealing with things in the spirit, this is all about the things in the spirit. It's just like somebody who prays. They can do a, a, a broad prayer, but then they can target a prayer. There's a difference. And we want to be able to target perfect discernment is an ability to target and judge. Target and judge, target and judge, target and judge. Now, people, people may say, well, you're, you're not called to judge, but we are. Amen. We are judges. Or we turn to your neighbor and tell them, you're a judge. Tell them, here comes the judge. <laughs> Some of you might know it. <laughs> Go to Luke 19. <laughs> Luke 
Luke 19. Perfect discernment. Third level discernment is called perfect discernment. It's the ability to target and judge. Amen? Man, do we need this these days. I mean, we need this tremendously because there's so much false perception, so much false doctrine, so much lying, so much influence. It's all over. We need to have perfect discernment. In Luke 19... In verse 41, it says, Now as Jesus drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you, when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation or they did not discern the time of visitation. Jesus wept over them. See, they knew the scriptures, but yet they didn't even know the time of Jesus' visitation, even though it was written in them. And he told them, Jesus told them, he said, look, you search the scriptures out thinking you have salvation, but you won't come to me to get it because he desires personal relationship. You don't realize how many times you've had a visitation and we've missed it. How many times God tried to speak to you and we missed it? How many times he showed something to you? You were waiting for a prayer to be answered or waiting for an answer in an area of something specific, but we got distracted because we weren't in the arena of perfect discernment because we couldn't judge the time. We couldn't judge the season we couldn't judge the moment. How about opportunities that came along our paths? How many people have been made decisions by how they felt when an opportunity came across the path when we did not have that perfect discernment and we missed the opportunity that was a blessing from God? And we said it was the devil. Because of lack of that discernment. The reason why there's lack of that discernment, we'll talk more about that. Number one is lack of connection. Is everybody okay? They didn't discern or judge the perfect timing. That was the perfect timing of Jesus. His visitations are perfect timing. And it's our responsibility to be in position. What was it? Look at they didn't discern or judge the perfect timing of Jesus' visitation. What was he impacting to them? A warning. A warning. How many times have we missed a warning? Ignored it. Ecclesiastes 3. Ecclesiastes 3. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, happy day. You know, the, 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 I, I'm going to try and explain this the best I can in, in the area and relate a parallel. When you're driving and you're coming to the light all of a sudden turns yellow, you must target. You must target quickly. 
Because you, if you're going fast enough to make it through and not get caught in a red light, you must be able to direct target what you're supposed to do. So you've got to narrow it all in very quickly. You must look at the cars right and left who are waiting. Somebody might be coming through. You don't know. You must be able to discern that must be targeted. So everything has to come in a quick, very quick, to discern whether you're going to hit the brakes or step on the gas. And if you do not target it, you can get in an accident, run a red light, or something even worse. That's called targeting what you judge. Does everybody get it? That's called perfect discernment. We want to reach a place where we're able to see things all the way around, right then and there, and discern what's up. Just like times and seasons, what we're in right now. You know how many believers don't even know what the heck is going on, and they call themselves believers? They have no idea. They're still lost in themselves. They're still asking Jesus to prosper them. They're so caught up on what God can do for them that they're not caught up on what they can do for God. It's only they're takers, not givers, because they can't discern. And that lack of discernment will get people in trouble, and it's going to get people in big trouble in these times. Do it okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1, let's speak it. To everything there is a what? Season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. These are all areas that need to be targeted. If these areas are not targeted, we fall out of position. We fall out of time. And we must be in God's time. God's timing is everything. That's where you and I are walking hand to hand. We walk together with him. We don't walk ahead of him. We don't walk behind him. We set him in front of us, but we walk with him. Does everybody understand? This takes prayer, takes relationships, takes practice, takes the, the formula of denying yourself, picking up the cross so that you can follow. It takes an area of Focus and concentration so that we're not misled. So that it becomes a part of your life. It's not something that you work at all the time. Does everybody understand it? You want to get it to where it's a part of your life. It's no, not something that is just, oh, oh, it's always. Discern seasons and times. Many don't understand the spiritual seasons and spiritual timing. They assume, they guess, or they call it coincidence. Even with the seven feasts of the Lord, those are the seven feasts of the Lord, right? They repeat themselves every year in their designated seasons. And the seasons reveal events. The events will coincide with God's timing to release a prophetic fulfillment but yet people don't see it. But many miss it. We've got all kinds of full moons, eclipses, weather changes, fires, California's burning like crazy. We've got floods in Missouri. We've got all kinds of things, pestilence and all earthquakes, all kinds of things going on that God has spoken about because he's spoken about them in past. Amen. These were prophetic, but these are things that he set forth in future so that you and I could discern the present time. 
everybody okay? Go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and verse 3. Perfect discernment is third level discernment. Same thing with worship. Worship is vital. It's like the tabernacle. We must see the tabernacle when you worship. So when you're in the outer court, you praise and worship, you clap and you dance. When you get in a holy place, you minister to the Lord. When you get in the most holy place, an exchange is made. Many people have never even made it to the most holy place. Because they're trying to, you can't get in the most holy place dancing. You can't get in the most holy place clapping. You are invited into the most holy place. Does everybody get it? So we got to be able to target discern. It's amazing how many people, everybody's trying to get into the holy place, or it's, it's outer court and people are on their knees worshiping. We haven't even gotten past yourself yet. You haven't even pushed the powers of darkness away. That's why you praise and worship. That becomes a religious act instead of a relationship. Does everybody understand? So we fight in the outer court to move back the powers of darkness so we can get and minister to the Lord, and then we get invited into the most holy place. There's an exchange that's being made. And let me tell you, when you hit the most holy place, there's a refreshing. There's healing. And many times, people need emotional healing more than they do physical healing. Matthew 24, verse 3. Let's speak it. Therefore, oh, 24, sorry. Now, as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one what? Deceives you. So let me ask you this. Are you a person that can be easily deceived if you're walking in perfect discernment? No way. No way. Does everybody get it? This is why God wants us to reach that third level of discernment to where it's perfect. Because more deception is being released. It's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And people are being misled instead of led. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 5, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of what? They're the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. The many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. For many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Have you noticed that you can sense hatred in the atmosphere? Violence vulgarity, just perverseness. It says here in verse 13, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. Signs of the times and end of the age. People don't even discern what's going on. Let me give you a quick example. We celebrating the 70th year of Israel becoming a nation. That's prophetic fulfillment. Seven meaning complete and perfect. But 70 also represents a generation. And we are the generation. 
2018 is a whole shift of what's happening right now. It's incredible the things that are being turned over and exposed. There's a fulfillment. In fact, the next feast to be fulfilled is called the Feast of Trumpets. It's no coincidence that we have a president called Trump. Hello. These are not coincidences. We must be able to discern these things that it's happening. Amen? We are the generation of the return of the Lord. Sometimes it's hard to get into our little peanut brains. But we are. Look at what Trump did. He moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Oh, that snapped everyone globally. Why? Because they know that's a part of end time fulfillment. Next, we'll see the temple being built. The next thing we'll also see is a seven-year treaty being signed. You don't think Satan kingdom sees what's happening? Oh, they do. They're trying to prevent the prophetic from being fulfilled because they know their time is short. Go to Daniel chapter 9. Is everybody okay? Perfect discernment. Third level, the masters. Daniel chapter 9. For the return of the Lord and the greatest harvest. Amen. It's happening. In verse 20, Daniel 9, verse, uh, yeah, 20 will work. Is everybody there? Now, while speaking, praying, and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I have been, who I have seen in, vis, in a, the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked with me and said, does everybody understand who Gabriel is, right? Yeah, Archangel Gabriel, okay messenger and he in verse 22 and he informed me and talked with me and said oh daniel i have now come forth to give you skill to what understand so do you think we need understanding to be associated with discernment yes at the beginning of your supplications, the command went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression and the make end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in an everlasting righteousness to seal up vision and prophecy and anoint the most holy. This is an overall, overall all in a, a review of everything of time. Then he becomes more specific. Now, therefore, understand that from the beginning, from, going, uh, from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks the street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublesome times. And after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be what? Cut off, but not for himself. Well, that means he'll be crucified. He'll, be, he'll allow himself to die for me and you. And the people of the prince who is to come, who would prince, what prince would this be? Amen. Prince of power of error or what we call Satan. He will come. He will come and shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood. Until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Then he shall confirm a what? A covenant with many for what? One week or what we call seven years. But in the middle of the week, 
He shall bring an end to the sacrifice and offering. In other words, he will break the covenant after three and a half years. And on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. So we see here the prince to come who is called Satan. He will make a seven-year peace treaty, but at three and a half years into it, he will break it. That peace treaty will also begin the seven-year tribulation. Does everybody get it? It will begin the seven-year tribulation. We are to target this understanding. Amen? We know right now that's what we are looking for. We're looking for the signing of a seven-year treaty. Once we know that there's a seven-year treaty signed, we have three and a half years left. Amen? That means we're going to do everything we can for the harvest. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Is everybody okay? Perfect discernment or third level discernment. Starting at verse 1, let's speak it. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the Son of Man is revealed, the Son of Perdition. We know that the falling away has begun already. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He will do this in mid-tribulation, three and a half years in. He will go in the temple and proclaim himself as God. That will be the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So what is being, who are the restrainers? We are. The body of Christ on earth is restraining him from fulfilling what he wants to do. Then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Again, Satan's going to come with all power, signs, and lying wonders. People will be deceived unless they have the discernment. In verse 11, it says, For this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie and that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So we see that strong delusion will come. Well, strong delusion is going to come because people are not walking in third-level discernment or what we call perfect discernment. Does everybody get this? Reaching Third level and perfect discernment is essential in these days. You may know the word, but if you're not led by the Spirit, how are you going to know what's happening? The apostles didn't have the Bible. They had the Holy Spirit. That's because relationship will be required. This is where there's going to be much separation of those who know him and those who don't know him. Because there are things that are going to be happening that people are going to be deceived thinking it is Jesus when it's not. Because it will have a form of Jesus. It will look like Jesus. It will have a fruit of Jesus. 
but only the Spirit of God can discern in that arena if you're in relationship. Does everybody understand that? Many people will be deceived during that time. They will not know. That's why Jesus warned us. He said, look at if they, if they say Jesus is in here or there, don't go. But people are going to go anyways. Listen, they had stuff going on in Tampa one time. They had a, 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 on one of these huge uh, buildings, there was an image of Jesus' mother. People were flocking there because there was this image on they were putting flowers there and all kinds of stuff. Even believers that I know were going there. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, it's a sign. It's a sign you're stupid. That's the only sign it was. It's a sign you got no discernment. Anyways. That's what's going to be happening more and more and more. There'll be images of Jesus. There'll be all kinds of stuff. What do you think the market of beasts is going to be like? Or what they call the image of the beast. Most like a computerized image. It will speak to you. And I saw this thing on, uh, uh, on the internet the other day. This computerized, it was a whole wall. That it was all computerized. And a face came forward, introduced itself. Artificial intelligence. And the person that stood on the platform, it knew that person by imagery. It knew how many people were in the family, knew everyone, everything about that person. There wasn't anything that this artificial intelligence didn't know about that person. And then it spoke to that person, and its face turned into the same person. And said, I want to know you more, but I'll get back with you. And then disappeared. And the next person got up, and it spoke everything about that person. I realized then how the image of the beast will be. Because people did not worship the image of the beast. Most likely it would be a computerized imagery. Just like what I saw, artificial intelligence. Blew me away. Blew me away. I thought, man, we are there already. I mean, we are there already. And people can't even discern the timing and the season of what's going on. Now, they can discern what's good and evil. That's good. But they better discern more than that. That's why if you don't know, you better hang around with someone who does. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. All right, let's go a little further. Let's go to... Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. Lacking perfect discernment. One of the things that interfere is selfish ambitions. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 1. Start at verse 1. Now concerning the times and seasons, brethren, I have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a what? Thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pangs upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness. We're not supposed to be in darkness, hello? So that this day should overtake you as a thief. Why? Because if you have fellowship with the light and you're walking in the light, you will have perfect discernment. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. 
Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. Many have fallen asleep spiritually because dull-heartedness, become dull of hearing, dull of seeing, lack of understanding and discernment. They become dull. Go to Isaiah 6. The more you touch the world, the more dull you come, become. Isaiah chapter 6. Again, I want to remind you that in the area of perfect discernment is where everything comes together instantly. Boom. But you got to be in the spirit. Isaiah 6, verse 9. Then the Lord said, Go and tell this people, keep on hearing but do not understand. Keep on seeing but do not what? Perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and, their, and shut their eyes lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and return and be what? Healed. Why? Because they become dull, they become blind, they become deaf, hardened-hearted, they become spiritually asleep. Lack of understanding and lack of knowledge. Lack of connection. Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah 10.10. 10. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living and the everlasting King. At His wrath the earth will tremble. And the nations will not be able to endure his indignation. Thus you shall say to them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under, the, under, these, under these heavens. You, <clears throat> he has made the earth by his power. He has established a word by his wisdom. He has stretched out the heavens at his discretion. When he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. And he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain, and he brings the wind out of his treasures. Everyone is dull-hearted without knowledge. Everyone is what? Dull-hearted without knowledge. So do we need knowledge to participate in discernment? Yes. Every metalsmith is put to shame by an image, for his molded image is a falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are futile, a work of errors. In the time of their punishment, they shall perish. Dull-hearted without knowledge, he expresses that. Dull-hearted without understanding. Two things that are vital. To have understanding and to have the knowledge. Amen? Hebrews chapter 5. Of course, it must be sealed by the Holy Spirit. Hebrew. Perfect discernment. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. He says, for by, through, 
For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who practices only of milk is unskilled in word of righteousness, for he is a babe. And this is important because there are still those who are really not willing to learn. They're not willing to go further. They're not willing to go deeper. So what was meat now becomes milk. Does everybody get that? What was meat now becomes milk because unless you're willing to go further, every time it, be, it becomes meat, it gets digested. Does everybody get it? Then it can become milk if it's not constantly refreshed. But solid food belongs to those who are what? Full of age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to what? Discern both good and evil. So then an individual, in fact, the Lord warns us about that, that many learn, learn, but never come to the knowledge of the truth because they're really not absorbing. You can come into this room 50 times a week. I won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, we can come and gather together all the time. But unless you are receiving by faith, in other words, you are believing, receiving, and willing to execute it, it does you no good. Amen. If you think everything's for someone else in a room and not you, you're deceived. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That prevents you from digesting the word. Many people are not willing to grow in knowledge and understanding. They're still getting fed by milk. Proverbs 2. So they'll never reach that full level of discernment. Proverbs chapter 2, is everyone there? Oh, hallelujah. Starting at verse 1. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. Hallelujah. Come on, get there. Let's speak it together. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment. Discernment is discernment. Amen? It's, the, it's that ability. It's that area to be able to judge. And lift up your voice for what? Understanding. So he talks about apply your heart to understanding and lift your voice up for what? I mean, apply your heart for understanding and lift your voice up for understanding. Lift up your voice. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the what? Knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright he is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of the justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you. That's discernment, isn't it? Understanding will do what? Keep you. See, I mean, it is vitally important. So he's talking about wisdom Knowledge and understanding. Amen. To deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the path of uprightness, to, talk, to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in perversity of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths. Knowledge and understanding will bring discernment, connecting to the future, Connecting from the future to the present and from the past to the present. 
and that area of events and things that are going on, directed by the Spirit, it will be able to target. Remember, perfect is the arena of targeting. So we are able to perfectly or target what we are going to judge. James chapter 1. <laughs> James chapter 1, verse 2, our favorite scripture. Perfect discernment, third level discernment. You know, we've relied on so much technology and instruments that we have lost. And I want you to know that technology and instruments and stuff like that is actually trying to replace God. It's trying to replace the Holy Spirit. Amen? I mean, they'd rather Google instead of, say, instead of go to the Lord. And I'm not saying it's bad, but I would go to the Lord first. You know, when we couldn't Google, we needed only, we, we had to go to the Lord. You couldn't just download a manual. You had to find out what the heck's up. Lord, tell me, what do I need to know? I can't tell you how many times, because I didn't know that anything about the computers. In fact, I hated them. I didn't want to go, go into the computer age at all. But I actually, I was forced to. Everyone is forced to. Amen. Because you can't keep up. You can't do what you need to do anymore. But prior to that, if I'd be working on a car, I'd have to have direction. My manual was Holy Spirit. And he would direct me and tell me. But these days, you know, the technology is trying to replace God. And people are not walking in a discernment. They're only walking in a discernment through wisdom of, of the world, understanding of the world, knowledge of the world. But when it comes spiritually, you can't get that. You can Google, but you're not going to get to that place. You can get testimonies and information, but you're not going to get to that. You've got to be connected. And I'm not talking internet connected. <laughs> or what is it, dish connected. You need to get cup connected, amen? <laughs> Verse 2, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces death, uh, or uh, patience, which is called endurance. Everyone say endurance. endurance. But let patience, or what? Endurance have its what? Perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking Nothing. So patience, endurance is experienced through things in your life. Those things that you've experienced in your life that you've had to endure are areas of your life that you're able to utilize as experiences from things of your past. So you are able to bring things from the past to the present and what God says from the future to the present and able to perfectly target and discern what's up. Is everybody okay? And we're going to close at Ezekiel 44. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 44. In verse 23. So is it good to ask for wisdom? Is it good to ask for understanding? Is it good to get knowledge? Of course it is. Never, never become dull in the area where you're not thirsty and hungry. Never fall in the place of lukewarm because you won't feed. Amen? You want to feed the spirit and starve the flesh. Or the flesh will take dominion. 44, 23. 23 and uh, what else? 23 and 24, I think it is. 
23, and they shall teach my people the difference between what? The holy and the unholy, and cause them to discern or judge between the unclean and the clean. And controversy, they shall stand as what? Judges. And judge it according to my judgments. They shall keep my laws and my statutes and all my appointed meetings. And they shall hollow my Sabbaths. We are judges. Does everybody get it? That means that we are to walk in perfect discernment. Targeting those areas what need to be judged. Whether they are clean, unclean, holy. Whether they are the will of God, not the will of God. Whether they are in God's timing. Or they are beneficial, helpful, or destructive. And many more things. It is time. It is important. We are in that season now. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask, Lord, that if there's any area of our being that has become dull or sleep, has fallen asleep, any part of our members that have fallen asleep at all in any way, Lord, we ask that you quicken them and revive them. And grant us, Lord, the thirst and hunger, not only just for your righteousness, but for knowledge, for understanding, for wisdom, that we may have that perfect discernment as your judges on earth as it is in heaven, in Jesus' name. And nobody said amen. amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.